Alright guys, good morning and welcome back to another video. Today, my do out here at this amazing location. Right now, I do something different for you as requested. Um, persons always commenting and asking about gears. Some persons asking about stuff about free diving and all them stuff there. So, I'm going to run through that with you today. But first, I'm going to introduce Master Instructor David Lee. How you doing guys? Yeah man, so he's actually the one that going to run through everything this morning. He's a free diver, um, five times world record champion for free diving. Yeah, so it's called unassisted free diving where you swim down with no fins, nothing. Um, so yes, I did that five times. So yeah, but that was a couple of lifetimes ago before, <laughs> before Raj Bond. <laughs> yeah, man. So before we get a bit into the video, we just have to run through the type of gears, fins, snorkel and all of that weights. So you guys can have a better understanding about you know <clears throat> what we do all right guys so let's get a bit into the video so um david explain to them a bit about free diving and what it all is all right and yeah so yeah so like raj mentioned um i'm a five times free diving world record holder and then we also run courses through an organization called learnfreediving.com and what we're going to be doing today raj said to get in a lot of questions about equipment and you know how to improve skills and these kind of things so yeah. we're going to just start going through the typical kind of equipment that you would be um uh, encountering while you're free diving or what you would want to look at purchasing now there's there's really like um you have your mask the fins snorkel weight belt and a wetsuit and those are the five things that we're going to cover today so let's just look at the, the typical thing that everybody is used to right <clears throat> this is a free diving mask and free diving masks are usually a little bit different than say like a scuba diving mask because a scuba diving mask you know everybody is going down for uh, a, a wide field of view so you're gonna find uh, scuba masks are a lot wider they may have some some glass on the sides to improve the vision but when you're free diving you want a low volume mask and a low volume mask only means that it has less air inside than the other one so the <clears throat> You'll notice that when you put this one on, the glass is very close to your to your eyes, right? So they're trying to minimize the amount of air that's inside the mask. So this is a typical free diving mask. Now they come in all different sizes and shapes. We have a few different kinds here. I'm gonna show you these. This is mine. Um, they have different brands, and we can cover brands. And if you have uh, any kind of questions after this, you can. Um, ping this guy because I think he, he has a hookup for equipment <laughs> and those kind of things, right? Yeah. So <clears throat> right here, these are fairly the same, but I wanted to point something out to you on these that I showed Raj the, um, earlier. Yeah. Notice, okay, so you notice that this one here, it has a reflective coating, right? And then this one is clear. Now, I personally don't like these ones, mainly because when you're free diving for depth, you're going to be spotting your friend right so you never want to free dive alone you don't want to spearfish alone and then when you're spotting your friend if your friend is diving deep and they're coming up you need to be able to see what's going on on their face the expressions on their face you know like, like are they in trouble do i need to help them and when you can't see the person's eyes it's not that great so i recommend if you're going to buy a mask buy one that's that's nice and clear that you can see through all right now this is another one here this is slightly lower volume than what what raj has you can see it's a little tinier cuts closer to the face and they're they're pretty indestructible right i mean these days they come with tempered glass so if the glass breaks it doesn't cut into to um, break into these sharp uh shards like that it just shatters kind of like a car windshield and like i say you know it's just very very typical they come in different colors and um fit now if you're gonna fit a mask this is pretty typical that most people don't realize all you do is you pull the you pull the strap away and then you take the mask and you place it on your face and you inhale slightly and it'll stick to your face now if it sticks there and stays that's a good fitting mask but if it sticks and then slowly it just falls off it means that water is leaking inside so you want to go ahead and stick it on and then you inhale slightly and it's sticking right i just exhale to make it fall off 
So the next thing that we're going to look at is the snorkel. <clears throat> now, um, right here you have two different types. One is slightly, one is is pretty rigid, like it's hard. And then this this is mine because I, I have an old one. And then Raj has a, a nice flexible one that's a lot softer that feels better on your face or on the side of your head. Now you're going to realize that the snorkels they want to have them pretty low profile like they'll cut them low so when you're when you have it in your mouth you don't have this long thing sticking up at the top of your head and they try to keep it close to your head because when you're diving you don't want this big thing just flapping around and then creating the additional shot, additional drag in the water right so you, they kind of keep it nice and shape the side of the head so it is more hydrodynamic right so that's a snorkel pretty standard and then we can share some additional um, gear reviews with you and break these things down even further. So Raj will share links the, to those. This, this snorkel with the, the vaulting. Ah, the yes. Nose. So that's another thing. You, you have to be careful because if you're getting into free diving, like Raj is getting into free diving, you want to stay clear of like the tourist snorkel equipment, right? So tourist snorkel equipment, you know, these are people who come on the cruise ships and then they will just die if they get a little bit of water in their mouth. So they, they create these snorkels and then you'll see this big ball on top and what it does, it has a, it has like a little table tennis ball inside. So when you go underwater, the ball floats up and then it locks off to keep water from going inside. It sounds ideal, but all it's really doing is creating a lot of drag. The other thing is that you will see a little piece come down here and it has a one way valve. So if water goes inside, it just drains out, right? Again, it's just additional weight and, and things that you don't need to carry because if you're getting into the type of free diving that Raj is getting into, then you don't really need that kind of stuff. So a nice low profile snorkel, right? So right now we're covering covering just equipment aspects of things and then we'll move on to, you know, okay, maybe, maybe that would, that's our next video about how to use them and these yeah. kind of things, right? And you'll have to come and dive with him. <laughs> right, so the next thing is wetsuits, right? Very typical type of wetsuit that you're gonna see. One that you'll see him wearing all the time is a two-piece suit. And then <clears throat> you'll have a bottom piece here, right? So this puts on you put this one on, on first, and then you'll pull this over your head. And then you'll notice the majority of these, you see this pad right here. This is for spare fishing because when you're loading the gun, you'll end up pull, putting the butt of the gun right here in your in your stomach and then you'll pull in. So this is this is here just to help you from getting really bruised up and it really does help a whole lot. And then the next thing is it comes with a hood on there. So this covers your head. Now the, the main purpose of these suits is to one, keep you warm and then protect you from the elements. When I say protect you from the elements, things around you like reef, fish, jellyfish, uh, sea urchins even, it will help a little bit against sea urchins. Sometimes sea urchins go right through. But suits will come in different thicknesses, right? You'll, you'll find skins. Skins are nothing but lycra. I mean, it's not much thicker than Raj's t-shirt and they don't do anything other than just protecting you from rubbing up against something that might sting you. But when you want to stay warm, especially if you stay in the water for any prolonged period of time, if you're in the water for half an hour, 45 minutes, three, six hours, because I know this guy um, spearfishes for some so. insane <laughs> amount of times, right? So yeah. um, you want to be warm and comfortable because the more comfortable you are, the better you will perform in the water. And this is one of the things that you want to, to look at getting, a, a nice wetsuit. Now the wetsuits, they shouldn't fit tight. They should fit close to your skin because how they work is that when you put them on, your body warms the water between your skin and the suit and then it doesn't move around. Now if you have a suit that's big and baggy and then you start um, swimming around and that warm water, every time you move, the warm water shoots out and cold water comes yeah, in. It's I not really, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do a whole lot. So always good that you get a nice fitting suit and ideally if you can try it before or if you're gonna buy one online, make sure that you look at the size chart and then you measure really, really well. That's the thing where you should have all the mine online and like everything when you try to fit up perfect and then when time it come, the chest part was a bit too big. So when I swim now, water get water in. Get in. in. I need just a box all around and just will come out of the water. Cause. These suits, I mean, you will find cheap ones, more expensive, and then they will run anywhere from like say $120 all the way up to $450, sometimes even $500. So this is a big range there. And I know you probably tried a few of the different brands, yeah. right? 
I'm kind of old school. When I find something that works for me, I just stick with it. I'm probably gonna see, you're gonna find me dead in the water with my with my same fins that I had for forever and ever. So the yeah, the wetsuits will will carry a, a long range of costs. And I'm gonna show you some other wetsuits that I use as well because I don't just free dive. I will scuba dive. I'll kite surf. I'll surf and just being in the water. And I always like to have something on because I'm one of those people that get, you know, if I get stung by a jellyfish, it, it yeah. sucks. It's really, really bad. So this is a this is a triathlon wetsuit. And this is really cheap, right? You can buy these online, like cheap ones, for $7,500. And then I, I tear them up all the time because I'm using them constantly. Now, the, the, the ones for spearfishing, I don't spearfish as much as this guy. So this doesn't get used that much, maybe three times a year, where he will use it three, four times a week, yeah. right? How long is your suit lasting, you know? Like what's the longest you've had to, or you've been able to make your suit last by the time you say, okay, I'm ready to uh, change? Probably like a year or less than a year because because I'm wearing it every single week or right. so. Yeah. And then what's it, what, what will happen to it? Just stretches out or it tears or what? It start having, start having these little creases until it start to tear and right. then, you know, and that's something you you can't really get rid of that right yeah. it's, it's just gonna happen but the more you use it the more it will wear out faster right so that that's this is a traditional one and like I said they come in different thicknesses you will have skins you'll have one millimeter two millimeter three millimeter and then here if you're in Jamaica uh, you know uh, tropical climate a three millimeter suit will work just fine for you that that's been working for uh, me for a year so what's your Okay, so you use a yeah, 1.5 no, as well? Yeah, I use a 3 mm, but I recommend like 1.5 mm -hmm. for tropical water. Okay. There are 2 mm, 3 mm, but nothing over 3 mm because then it will get too mm -hmm. hot in the suit. No, that's true, but I am a huge wuss. So, like, I'm, I'm, I suck when it comes to cold, so I go with 3 mm all the time. Yeah. He's more macho than me, so I'm, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, all right. Now, when you put this suit on, it's, it's made of neoprene, right? And neoprene floats. So when you get in the water, of course, you're going to be floating. And then if you try to dive down, it becomes much more difficult because it's kind of like holding a float on the surface and trying to swim down with a float. So then how do you counteract that? The next thing is, okay, well, you get a weight belt. Now, this is my weight belt. <clears throat> do you have your weight belt? Close uh, by? No? No. That's no. okay. All right. But this is this is not the traditional type of weight belt. This is something that we <laughs> developed well over 20 years ago. And this is super easy to make, right? These are just regular uh, clips that I buy like on Amazon. They're about, uh, I think they're two inches wide. And then this right here is actually an inner tube from a tire or a truck or something like that. So I just cut it the same width. And then I buy these plastic clips and then these ones here that hold the weight from moving and then i buy the weights from a local guy here in jamaica that melts down all the lead in the batteries and makes these one one pound weights so this is one thing when you when you have a weight belt you want to have the weights evenly distributed because if you put say just a three pound here and a one pound here you're going to be diving lopsided so you'll notice that when i put this one on I usually put it on right around my hips right here and I'll put it around my stomach and then I clip it. So I'll have two weights here and here. So I'm very balanced going through the water. Now, the reason that we went with this stretchy tube is our stretchy inner tube <clears throat> is that as you free dive, your body and the air in your, your lungs will get compressed. Now, if you turn and you dive head down and you put a weight belt that doesn't move like you know I see a lot of people using the webbing it's a, a rigid material that doesn't stretch and then when you put that around your waist and you turn upside down as your chest compresses you're gonna find that weight belt just right right up up on your chest like this right of course all depending on 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 body size right so this what we end up doing is you put it around your hips not your stomach and then it has two benefits one it stays where it is and then it's not on my stomach so it doesn't impede breathing it doesn't interfere with my breathing i'm see everything up here from my stomach all the way up to my chest nice and free easy to breathe and then when i'm swimming down it doesn't it doesn't ride up on me right and then the other thing is i remember when i was using these cloth webbing weight belts 
uh, I would turn upside down, you know, you swim down to say 20 meters, 80 feet or something. And as you're going down, you just feel those weights go boom. And then they, and then you turn around and if you're fairly skinny, when you turn around, it drops back down and then weights will hit you on the hip bones and then you end up with black and blues and those kind of things. So that's typical wetsuit, or not wetsuit, but weight belt. Wait. Now, the thing that everybody always wants to get into is fins, right? Now with fins, Here's a very old school fin, right? But they still make these. These fins here are probably 20 something years old now. And this is a, a, a brand that's still around, Spora Sub. But you'll notice that this is a plastic blade. So you, usually you will find these fins much cheaper. Uh, I think you can start getting free diving fins now, like cheap ones for probably like $75, $80 for a cheap yeah. pair. And then it will go all the way up to like six, seven hundred dollars for a pair of carbon fiber fins. And we'll show you up here, here, right? And then of course, this will work for you. If you're not used to free diving, yes, okay. And you're not sure if you want to get into it full time, then I would recommend you get a pair of plastic plastic fins because you can beat it up, throw it around, and then it'll last a long time. But there's a little bit lack of performance there, right? It's gonna be better than a traditional short fin, but it's not gonna be as good as a high performance fin. And I'll tell you why, it's really just the, the makeup of the material. This is plastic and plastic sorta of has a memory. So when you bend it, say I put it in my bag and it's like this and it stays overnight. When I take it out of the bag, it's gonna be shaped like this and then it may slowly come back. Now I'm gonna show you like more of a high performance fin, which is what uh, like Raj uses here. And this is made out of carbon fiber. Now I'll make fun of Raj all day long for putting on these stickers on his fins, <laughs> but they're quite pretty and they, they photograph well. So I'm not gonna make too much fun of you. But this is a carbon fiber fin. And then carbon fiber doesn't have any memory. So what happens is if it's bent like this and you let it go the next day, it's gonna come back and maintain the same shape that it did. Now, why is that important? When you're going through the water and then you kick, right? When you kick and you put the energy in and the blade bends like this, guess what happens? The blade does a little bit of work for you as it straightens out. So that's one of the main benefits, not just not that it, does, that it has mem no memory, but also that you can get a little bit more, um, how would you say, efficiency out of the fin without putting in too much work. But how do you like these? I mean, when you move from a traditional rubber fin or a plastic fin to this, what did you notice? I mean, less work. Because the fin, the fin basically do all the work for you. Like when you push, it just flip up by itself, like as we say. Right. So, and then you're going to find different ones. Um, like for instance, these have a little cutout here that will help to channel the water. And then you will see that the rails of the fin have this rubber rail here. And this helps when you're kicking. When you're kicking two fins, sometimes you know you're kicking like this underwater and then you'll realize that sometimes if this little rail was not on it you'll find that you kick and your foot's like sliding off to the side and things like that so these help to keep your feet in a nice vertical pattern when you when you're kicking all right so that's raj's carbon fiber fins and then i'm really particular remember i tell you i'm super old school so i've been sticking with this brand this is my first or no my second pair of fins in yeah, 20 years. Can you imagine that? So this they, is they, like they last a I don't know what he's doing. Are you eating them or something? <laughs> right? So that's really that's really the, the, the core of free diving equipment, right? Uh, now when it gets into, of course, spearfishing, Rush can help guide you on that as to, you know, what gun works best. And I don't spearfish as much as this guy, but you know, there's floats and spear guns and all different kinds of kind of fun things that, you know, reels, who knows, like I say, it's best that you talk to him, but this is sort of your go-to kit for free diving. Uh, this is the minimum that you should have, whether you go with plastic blades, blades or carbon fiber blades, it's really gonna be up to your budget and how much you're gonna be in the water. But um, yeah, I think if you have any questions, you can direct them to, to Mr. Raj and then we can help you. And I'll share some links with you, Raj, from learnfreediving.com because we've yeah. been doing some reviews on, on the equipment. I'm breaking them down quite a lot more. So that's all I got for you right now. But I think the next thing that we're doing, we're going to be going in the lagoon and doing some dives, right? Yeah. So. All right, guys. So I'm going to leave all... Wait, let me get the light in good. Yeah, I'm going to leave all the links to his website in the description so y'all can go check him out. But right now, 
we head down to the lagoon we are going to do a bit of free diving and stuff and then get back up here and do a second video so just stay tuned for that until then catch you next one fired all of the bullets yeah you shot me through the heart casting dice and roulettes the game was set right from the start Coming back for more. Fresh is doing it.